common method for interpolating between two points in one dimension is called linear interpolation. Uh, now this is what MATLAB is actually doing when it's making the linear interpolation between two points. Uh, and we don't actually see this happening because we're going to be using a built-in function in MATLAB. But I'll go briefly into the details of what it's actually doing. And if you've ever done interpolation by hand, this is uh, linear interpolation by hand. This is exactly what you're doing. Uh, if you've taken a uh, thermodynamics course, you've most likely had to use interpolation. So I'll explain, this is the formula that it's actually using. So basically what we have is we're trying to find a value y. So that's the value of our dependent variable. So maybe that's if our independent variable is time, our dependent variable is temperature, let's say. Uh, we want to know what the temperature is between two times that we actually measure the temperature of our water, let's say. So we want to know y as specific time. x is our independent variable in this equation, so that would equate to time. So let's just say that we measured the temperature at one minute, we measured it at two minutes, and we're interested here in knowing at 1.7 minutes what's the temperature going to be. So looking at this formula, what's happening? We're going to know that we uh, measured a lot of data points, let's say one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute. So what we have to do is first say, okay, we want to know at 1.7 minutes what was happening. We have to find the point, the measured point to the left of that, closest to the left of it, which in our example would be one minute, and the measured point closest to the right of it, which in our example would be two minutes. Uh, and the data need not be evenly spaced uh, in order to do this. In, in this example I'm talking about it is, but we could measure at one minute, two and a half minutes, three minutes. Always we're looking at what's the closest data point to the left, what's the actual data point to the right. So looking at this formula here, if we wanted to know at 1.7 minutes what's happening, the x value would be 1.7. Our x0 value would be 1, and the x1 value would be 2. The not values are the value to the left, the 1 values are the value to the right. Then we're measuring our temperature at those uh, times. So we would know the temperature just to the right, that's y1, and the temperature value just to the left, that's the y0. And then we add to that whole thing y0, and then that's going to give us our linear estimate as to the value of y. Really all this is is a kind of fancy weighted average between the data points that we actually sampled. So the linear part, and we'll see this in the examples, we're just taking those two data points, we're drawing a straight line between them, and then we're seeing where on that line does our, our dependent variable lie given what our independent variable is. On the next uh, example we'll see how this, is, how this looks visually. Uh, and like I said, the data need not be evenly spaced in 1D interpolation, though often it is. So how are we actually going to use this in MATLAB, which is going to do a lot of the work for us? We're going to use this interp1 function, uh, and then look at the arguments that it takes. So to use interp1, at least the simplest way to use it, the first argument we're going to give it is a list of all of our independent variables. So this is, carrying through our temperature example, all the times that we measured the temperature of something as a vector. The second argument is our dependent variables. So this is at those times, what was the temperature that we measured? So again, if we measured at one minute, two minute, three minute, four minutes, that's our x. The temperature readings at those is going to be the vector of y. And then the third argument, this x underscore int, those are the, in this example, time locations that we want to interpolate at. So let's say we're interested at 1.5 minutes, then 1.5 is what we would put into that third argument there. And then what it gives us out is the linear interpolated estimate to our dependent variable. So the estimate as to what was the temperature at that specific time that we did not actually measure in our experiment. Now this x underscore int does not have to be a scalar value, it can be a vector of values as well. So if we want to make a lot of estimates, interpolate between a lot of values, then we can put a vector in for x int, and then we're going to get out a vector of values that corresponds to our estimates of the dependent variable at those independent variable locations. A more advanced way to use this, you can put a matrix value in for y, so maybe you have one dependent variable, but multiple, uh, sorry, one independent variable, multiple dependent variables that you want to do interpolation on. That's another way to use it. But for this course, really what we're going to look at is one dependent variable to one independent variable, and then using the interpolation for that.